Hey everyone, Jamal here with Review Me and Paper Cut Magazine for another edition of Shoot the Shit, where real creatives get real. We're here with the awesome fashion and celebrity stylist, Daniela Young. Say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> cool. And she's based in Brooklyn. She does awesome, amazing uh, fashion styling. She's done stuff for W and you practically own nylon. I'm pretty sure I've seen, I've seen you on like 20 nylon covers yes. and you're even, and we'll get into this. She's even starting her own line, which is amazing. So we'll talk more about that. Um, but yeah, so before we um, get into that, if you just want to quickly give a quick background, one or two minutes about yourself and we'll go from there. Okay. Um, well, I'm, my name is Daniela Young. I'm a New York based uh, fashion stylist, creative consultant, and um, now also designer, since I started my own line with a friend of mine. And um, yeah, I work freelance for all sorts of different magazines, editorial, advertising. Um, I was fashion editor at Spin Magazine for five years, and I got my start at German Vogue as an assistant. That was my first foreign into styling. And I've been freelance for like the last 10 years in New York, based in New York. Cool, wow, yeah, so obviously a lot of awesome stuff to unpack there. <laughs> Let's kind of rewind it. So what the hell did you go to school for? There's no such thing as like fashion style in school. Well, there kind of is now in New York, but yeah, I'll just call that a joke. So like, yeah, how the heck did you do this? It was really, I, I didn't study fashion at all. In Germany, fashion, I'm German born. So in Germany, fashion is not a huge, uh, industry i mean back in the day it wasn't at least when i was growing up so actually i started communications and journalism which in hindsight actually helped me a lot like in the business in terms of communicating and working with advertising clients and i just by chance happened to um get a job as an assistant at german vogue i didn't really know much about fashion or i wasn't like particularly super interested and in, by working with Vogue, I was at Vogue for four years and I kind of like sort of rose through the ranks. I started in marketing first and then I ended up in the fashion department. And this is really sort of where my 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 sort of interest in fashion started was by working and assisting on Vogue shoots and learning about fashion and designers and models and all of that. And then when I um, wanted to move to New York, a friend of mine just said, you should just become a freelance stylist. And, you know, I had contacts through my Vogue friends and photographers, and I just started testing and um, working in New York freelance. And then I ended up working at Spin Magazine. And again, started as an assistant and then worked my way up to fashion director. And I was fashion director at Spin for five years. So never studied fashion or fashion design, nothing. <laughs> so it was just really about just getting in there, getting your feet wet and just learning on the absolutely, job. Really. Absolutely. And then, okay, so you didn't know anything about fashion. You jumped in, mm -hmm. got a nice assist from Vogue, moved to New York, yeah. and then you became the fashion director of Spin. So kind of what was that like? Because Spin's obviously a music magazine. Yeah. Um, so kind of it, what was that like? It was a really... I was at Spin in sort of the early 2000s, and it was a really exciting time at the magazine. There was a big redesign happening, and there was fashion was more linked to it wasn't like fashion, fashion, it was more like about youth culture and music related things and music inspired things, which was really, I had a huge interest. I love music, I love musicians, and so for me, it was kind of the perfect hybrid between all my interests in musicians and counterculture and subcultures and punk and ska and pop, rock, and, um, you know, and sort of integrating it with fashion stories and working with really exciting photographers. A lot of photographers that we work with at Spin ended up becoming these huge famous photographers like Terry Richardson, Alexi Hay. Um, Stefan Ruiz, um, Norbert Schoerner, a lot of these photographers that are now big household names kind of started at Spin. And it was a really exciting time and it was one of my favorite, favorite uh, jobs I've ever done. Like I learned a lot at Spin. Because also it was sort of the pre-internet era. 
So we sort of had to do a lot of um, research and working, you know, in a completely different way than you do now, you know, where you just Google everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's actually a good point. So talk to me about how you approached. So obviously at, you know, Spin, since you're the fashion director, a lot of the ideas kind of came from you, correct? In terms of like, you'd be like, hey, we're going to shoot this person with this photographer. And I'm guessing you kind of like commissioned the photographer. So I guess walk me through one of your favorite shoots with say Terry Richardson. How did that come about? And, you know, walk us through that. Well, with Terry, it was basically um, a lot of times we would shoot musicians and then I would find sort of an angle to like with Terry, I think it was all these um, singers of up and coming bands. And I had a lot of friends in the music business. And, um, and so I would always, you know, try to have my ear on the ground and email everybody and ask, you know, for suggestions, like if they heard. And so I remember we shot one of the musicians, I think one of the singers was Diego from this band Elephant. And then we shot Paul Banks from Interpol when Interpol was just like up and coming. And, um, and um, this other guy, oh my God, I forgot his name, but it was all musicians and, you know, and half, like it was always based around their own style. So you couldn't really completely style them, but I quite like that. I like, I sort of love the era of musicians before they completely became, you know, um, superstars and working with the stylists all the time. I always tried to sort of implement what they were wearing to begin with. And, um, and a lot of times, like when I commissioned uh, photo shoots, it was, you know, we had a lot of advertisers. So you would always have to think of what kind of like story could we do and where, you know, how would kids relate to it? So it was a lot of denim shoots. It was a lot of sort of punk inspired shoots, um, goth inspired shoots, sort of all the music genres that we could possibly think of. Like there was a lot of grunge, Nirvana influences, which, which is still like 10 years later in fashion. And um, and interesting locations to find, you know, like we had like uh, shoots in the desert. I remember one shoot that we, do, we, we did in the desert and we just shot these random kids that we found in the street in LA, literally picked them up and drove two hours into the Mojave Desert and just put them in clothes. But it was kind of an exciting time because um, because Spin wasn't a fashion magazine. We had a little bit more freedom in terms of just what we put on them. And I, I customized a lot of the clothes and, you know, cut things apart. I used a lot of vintage, which now you don't really see in sort of the mainstream magazines anymore. But it was it was a really cool time. One of my favorites. So you were actually kind of getting your hands in there, actually, really, not only even styling, but almost designing in a sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I yeah. mean, that was the fun. That was, it was always really super collaborative. And because a lot of times, like, we wouldn't actually get the clothes. You know, when you, um, when you think of, like, the early 2000s, um, you know, and Spin not being, like, a high fashion magazine, you couldn't just call, you know, couture beautiful samples for you know fashion stories so we would have to really come up with interesting ideas how to make you know how can we make a story out of like you know denim and sweatshirts and um, we had to shoot a lot of streetwear back in the day and you know and by we just i used a lot of interesting casting i think casting was sort of our way to get you know cooler kids and i remember one of the casting um my friend said did a lot of the casting for um, our issues with Daniel Paddle, who now is casting Givenchy. He does Philip Lim. You know, he does all these big fashion shows. And, you know, and when he started out, like we started kind of out together, he would always find me these amazing kids on the street and we would just like put them in fashion shoots. Yeah, that's so cool. So, you know, some of the things I'm kind of hearing. So one of the things that we always hear from either stylists or even fashion or photographers is they'll, they'll say something to the effect of, oh, I can't get clothes, I, don't, I need pull letters. But for you guys, and I think that's actually very important, is you were coming from a music magazine and fashion brands are like, you're music, we don't care. So you guys just had to make it up. You were scrappy, you were hustling. Yeah. And I like that. Oh yeah, I mean the hustle, that's what I always say. I try to explain this now to you know young stylists or assistants that want to branch out. Like in the beginning, even when I was 
um, I didn't really do like that many test shoots because I pretty much uh, came from working at Vogue and then, you know, I would start uh, basically working right away. Um, so I didn't have like an extended ex uh, freelance period in between, but I shot a lot of vintage. Like I, I had so much stuff that I would, I would constantly scour flea markets and go, you know, and cut things up and like paint on, paint on jackets and, you know, a lot of the stuff that you see now that designers are actually designing, like you know, painting on things or turning things inside out, upside down, sewing. I mean, um, we had to do by ourselves because we didn't really. You know, some of the clothes we had to shoot were really boring, so you always have to come up with like a cool idea how to make them like less boring. So we had like things embroidered. Um, I put like I, I would shoot a hoodie and then put rivets in. You know, bring it bring it to a place and just have grommets all over, or stuff like that. I mean, it's it makes you sort of ingenious because you have to work within very small parameters. But the fun thing thing is. When I look at some of the shoots I did back in the day for spin, they still seem sort of fresh today because it wasn't like as, you know, it still looks like it could be now in a way, you know, because the fashion hasn't really changed that much. Like people still love kind of the same silhouettes, like a lot of jeans, sneakers, that kind of vibe. Yeah, and, and streetwear is kind of really in right now and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I think we'll get into that. I think you, you did something. Did, did I see that? No, I can't remember. You have so many people on your website. I, I think I saw somebody, but we'll get into it later. But um, yeah, you, you have some bloggers on there or something, people streetwear. So yeah, definitely that's kind of in right now. Yeah. So yeah. So, so okay, you're you're finished with, um, you, you're at Spin and then, you know, why do you want to leave Spin and move on to other things? Well, it was mostly, I was at Spin for five years and then I had uh, my daughter and you know and being a working mother in america is just um it's you know it's hard because you have very little time off and um i had my daughter and then after a year i just felt like i i i didn't have enough time with her so i just i felt like i didn't want to be in an office every day anymore i felt like after five years it was time to make a change and i just wanted to be freelance because you know being in europe or from Europe, I would love to go home for like a month instead of like a two week vacation. So it was it was kind of sort of a necessity to move on in order to have like the life that I wanted to lead to work less and um, and spend more time with my family and travel more and um, spend a month every year in Europe, seeing all my friends and travel and that kind of stuff. So freelance um, just seemed more suited to my life at the time. So. That's interesting. Yeah, most people would would kill to to be you know in a, in a locked in magazine position, but you're like, eh, I'm gonna go freelance, get that freedom, which is you know the free yeah. the free part. Um, obviously, it, it can be more up and down, but I think there are a lot of benefits, and you can work on a lot of different things and create yeah. your yeah. own schedule. It's so, not for everybody, for sure. I mean, I know people that really don't like being freelance. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, not for me. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. So let's get into a quick, uh, one of the top questions here is, so what is something, and this is coming from a photographer's mm -hmm. perspective, I feel like, what is something that you can offer a stylist besides a pull letter, pull letter that would empower them to make a difference um, such that they are a yes to collaborating with you and the team versus saying no? Like what I offer to a photographer or... Or as a photographer, what would you offer to a stylist like yourself to make you want to join the project besides oh, a pull okay. letter or a, a, yeah. Oh, um, in general, like when I work with photographers or photographers, let's say if I don't have a relationship with a photographer and I get approached about doing a story, I mostly, first of all, look at their work. You know, I look at their pictures and see if, you know, we would vibe if I like his or her work. And if this is something that interests me, um, I'm really selective since I've been doing it for a long time, who I'm doing editorial with, because I'd rather do less editorial and do really amazing shoots when I do editorial. So mostly it's just like about, do I like his or her work? And um, obviously if it's for a magazine, then you know it, I have a look at the magazine, I have a look at 
who else shoots for the magazine, what, you know, what kind of stories they do. And then sort of, you know, based on the story, what the photographer is suggesting, what he wants to do, um, I say yes or no. Cool. And then and sometimes it's based on budget, like because a lot of magazines have no budget at all. Mm -hmm. So yeah. then it becomes also like, do I want to invest my own money into, you know, it becomes sort of, um, it depends on, you know, how much I, do I want to do it to really invest my own money into it. Yeah. So from what you're seeing, it sounds like obviously the photographer's work, like if the work is amazing, that'll pique your interest. Yeah. If there's going to be a outcome in terms of it being published somewhere, that'll increase the chances. If there's yes. some budget, that'll increase it further. So it just seems like, you know, what's the ROI? What's the return on your investment? If there's, yeah, if, exactly. If there's, yeah, if there's placement, if there's, you know, quality work that's going to come out of it. And, you know, yeah. if there's a budget for you to, you know, be able to do something. Yeah, so that makes yeah. a lot of sense. And I think that's probably for whether you're a big time stylist or just coming out stylist, you know, you want to know if what you're doing will have benefit either in your portfolio or monetary or um, yeah. exposure. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Thank cool. You. Okay, so you attack freelance. So most stylists are freelance. Yeah. So how did you transition to being freelance and finding jobs? That, that might even be a question. Let me see. Da -da -da. <laughs> no. It's not, but that's fine. How did you approach, um, you know, being, a, you know, getting gigs and obviously you had connections, but, you know, yeah. obviously you had to make a website and, you know, how did you yeah. approach being a freelance stylist? Yeah, I mean, for yeah, it was exactly kind of this. I mean, obviously coming from a magazine that for five years, I had a lot of um, contacts in the photography world. I knew a lot of photographers. I knew a lot of even other magazine editors, you know, because you kind of run in similar circles. And, you know, and you just start setting up meetings. And um, I was lucky because after I left Spin, my first editorial was a, a cover shoot for Dutch magazine, which at the time, it doesn't, it's no longer around. It folded. Um, but it was one of the most progressive, most um, interesting, already fashion magazines at the time. So that was sort of my first post-Spin job. And it was an amazing shoot with an amazing photographer team. And um, and then I just, you know, I was approached by agent and joined an agency. And um, and you just, you know, it's, it's just, it sort of rolls along, you know, like one job comes after the other. Um, you know, you just put yourself out there, you go on meetings. And, you know, and obviously I was lucky because I had a lot of, um, friends already that I've been working with for a long time and spin. So I didn't have to start from scratch. Like I had a pretty solid base and I knew I was going to able to support myself financially. So that was, um, that was okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, from what I'm, from what I'm, I'm, there was a question. Was a question. question of, what is a good way to put yourself right in the front of the right people? I skipped over that one. What types yeah. of events would you attend? What are some good resources to use? You kind of hit upon um, some of those things, but I guess if you could, sum up what you just said to attack that question that'd be awesome yeah i mean i don't really go to events or yeah i mean i attend fashion week some fashion week events but i don't ever really got a job by going out you know going to parties and openings i mean it's always good to mingle i guess um i don't do that as much as i probably should be doing it but um i think just me i really prefer one-on-one -on -one meetings i like to meet with photographers i like to meet with even agents, you know, meet with photo agents, um, show them your work, and then they will probably say, hey, I have a few photographers that would be perfect for you. You know, like from the temperament wise, but also your work would gel. And then, you know, I like setting up meetings and I think it's most um, beneficial. Like for me, I think the people I've worked with the most, I've met like one-on-one -on -one with. I haven't really met them like socially or um through you know parties or whatever i think i prefer setting up meetings old school and meet with people cool. one nice 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 uh so let's one of my favorite topics is let's get into some of the work and i think this can attack um oh perfect this can actually attack two birds with one stone so i'll <laughs> screen share let me 
your website, which is, oh, that's not your website, but we'll get into what that is in a moment. Um, okay, boom, this is your website. Yes. So, cool. Uh, so we have a, a W piece here. Um, so your first link is covers, and I believe one of the questions is, we'll make this full screen so people can see it. So it is, what is it like doing a cover shoot? What did you enjoy most editorial? And what do you enjoy most editorial or personal styling? So first let's talk about covers. What's yeah. it like doing covers? And we'll just first kind of scroll through to, to see all your um, amazing covers. Yeah. W uh, and we have L, which is awesome. Sam, Santa Miller and we have Honor and GQ and Rodeo and this <laughs> and that and Nylon and Dove and Over and all these awesome <laughs> covers. It's amazing. Stop. All these I'm pretty... kind of, it's funny because I never really sort of look at my work that way. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, you I just scroll it. You've shot like 30, 40, Lucilina Gomez, Ashley Green, Taylor Mott. These are all like style mavens right now and you know in the current generation yeah. and you've kind of styled them all which is yeah I, just have definitely, I have done a lot of nylon covers which yeah it's just sort of over the years it's kind of like oh, okay um, an, an old school spin right there yeah. nice i don't have that much spin stuff anymore because it's now so long ago but my some of my favorites i still put on there you know for old cool. sake yeah so let's talk about you know what's it like doing a cover uh and let's maybe even get specific you know what, what's one of your favorite nylon covers you know i'll just well, scroll through you and you can scroll talk by uh mary kate olsen that was actually my very first nylon cover and it has kind of a funny backstory because when i was approached by nylon um this was this was very sort of um shortly after i left spin because before i, le I left spin i couldn't do any freelance work for other magazines um, so I was on vacation in Austria and I was skiing and I was literally on top of a mountain and the photo editor at the time from Nylon called me and said that they're shooting Mary Kate Olsen. They presented 20 portfolios to her. She's very picky about her stylist and that she, out of all the people that presented, she picked me and the shoot was like, I think it was, I think they called me on Wednesday and the shoot was on Tuesday, but I was in Austria on vacation. And I said, you know, and of course, like at the time, like, you know, I was a the Olsen twins, you know, they have such amazing personal style and I love them. And I said, I would be, you know, so in love with working with her, but I said, I can't do it. Like I'm literally in Austria. I don't even have access to a computer. I'm on top of a mountain. And he called me back and said, like, you have to do it because otherwise the whole shoot is going to fall through. And so I literally had to, in Austria, find a computer. Um, I ended up doing requests, like, from vacation and then flew back to New York. And I ended up actually bringing a lot of my own vintage clothes to the shoot. And Mary-Kate was so cool. And, of course, like, we're completely yin yang like we completely fell in love with each other like we just clicked and we have very similar taste and she ended up actually wearing a lot of my vintage clothes that i brought from my closet in the shoot which is ironic and you know and she that was such a good experience that i ended up she was booking me after this like i did a book project with the olsen twins um i did i was working on their line elizabeth and james when they launched it for like the probably four years after they launched it. Um, so it became like a really amazing um, relationship with the Olsons due to their cover. So, you know, I got something really amazing out of it. So that was definitely one of my fave shoots. Cool, okay, nice. And then let's see if we could jump on another one. Yeah, man, you have so many. I don't even know which one to choose. <laughs> I don't even have like my last two nylon covers are not even up yet. The Nicki Minaj and um, Riley Hale, I think it's not even up yet. Interesting. Let's talk Alexa Chung. Um, so she's kind of, you know, that street stylist. You know, what was it like kind of shooting this? It's kind of, um, you know, kind of she, men's wear look. She's super nice. I mean, she definitely, she's one of those it girls that, you know, she has amazing taste. So it's kind of like easy to style her because she already knows kind of what she likes, what looks good on her. Um, 
I sort of really tailored all the clothes I pulled for the shoot um, towards her personal aesthetic. And um, she looks, I think the thing what surprised me most is when you see her, she always looks so perfectly disheveled. Like she seems like the girl that doesn't really care what she just throws things on and they just magically look amazing. But she actually does put a lot of care into what she wears. Let's just say that. She's definitely particular. And she was, you know, and she's really, really fun to work with. Like she was nice and sweet. So she's mastered the I don't care look. She mastered the I don't care look, but she does care. <laughs> cool. Let's talk about guys. So, you know, we see Jared Leto here. That's kind of a different style. So how do you kind of approach styling a guy? Um, well, with Jared, you know, he's a rock star as well as an actor. And this was before he won the Oscar. Um, so he, you know, he likes fashion. I mean, which as a, not all guys like fashion when you shoot them. So there can be an uphill battle, but he really, he's into clothes. He's into designers. So we had a lot of stuff, um, that he liked and, you know, and I just sort of, um, wanted to sort of make him look like a rock star and in this very nylon way, which he totally dug. And he's also a little eccentric, which helps because you can sort of push him, you know, to wear sometimes a little things that are a little off the cuff um, in his game of trying things. You know, he kind of really trusts. I mean, he came in and said, do whatever you want, put me in whatever you want. Like he was very trusting and nice. And, you know, and I ended up working with him after the shoot for a couple of other projects. So, yeah, it's again, like sometimes, you know, you meet, um, you meet celebrities and you kind of um, like their vibe and they like your vibe and then you end up working with them on other projects, which can be great. And then, so how much freedom do you have? It kind of seems like you are able to really kind of control it. So when you're working with Nylon yeah. or WWD Beauty, as we see here, are you kind of like in charge or are there some kind of directions that you need to follow? What's kind of the approach um, that you take well it depends like if you work for an independent magazine like rodeo the one that you just pulled up that's a, a super small independent publication they don't really care what you shoot for the cover they just want to go for like the best um look you know like they don't really care for credits stuff like that for nylon i mean in the past um, not as much anymore but in the past you do have to shoot certain advertisers which also with celebrities you know it's it's it depends like you can't really push celebrities to wear a thing if they don't want to wear it or they don't fit or you know so it's kind of it's a very delicate dance but you always try to i i most of the time try to kind of do something with celebrities that is sort of feels fresh feels like something they haven't done before um you know get them out of their comfort zone a little bit and also make them feel like they look cute they look sexy I mean, my, my, my style with girls is very much casual, a little bit on the rock and roll sexy side. So I think that's why I work so well with nylon because that's, you know, the, the magazine aesthetic is very much about this high, low mix of high fashion with like not so high fashion and young and cool. And I always try to kind of work around, you know, the celebrities sort of own personal aesthetic, but at the same time, you know, kind of like, make them look a little bit different than what they're usually used for. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So we'll close that for a little bit. And so that question has kind of been answered mostly. And I think also half of the question was something to the effect of, do you prefer editorial or advertising or, you know, what's, or commercial, what's kind of the, or, oh, sorry, no, it was editorial versus personal style. Oh, well, personal styling is, is, is a whole different thing because I think personal styling, what I don't know if the question refers to personal styling, like personal styling in the styling world refers to when you actually sort of work with people on their wardrobe, like, you know, it can be anybody like a personal stylist, which is not really what I do. There's people that do this really well, but like I work more on editorial and advertising and, you know, I mean, fun, like it's, it's definitely more fun to work on advertor and on advertising shoots because you make money, but at the same time, you know, editorial like lets you be creative and you know you can play around with all these amazing designer clothes. Um, but you know, I like both. I like the mix of both. And you know, as a freelance, 
um, stylists, you need both, you know, I mean, you certainly can't live off editorial, like, editorial doesn't pay anything. So you have to rely on advertising. And there's a lot of like fun advertising shoots. I mean, there's advertising shoots that you do, you know, for the money. I mean, to be honest, but um, there's a lot of um, advertising shoots I've done where I had like lots of, you know, lots of fun and great trips. And, um, you know, when you work with Nike companies like this, it's, it can be super, super fun. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. So let's get into another question. I think this one is, um, can you explain a little about, bit about your collaboration pot process when you book for a shoot? Um, you know, a mood board with the photographer, is it a separate style board? Do you meet with the team prior to the shoot and give input? Kind of what's the, what's your collaboration process? Um, well, if it's, it's different for editorial and it's different for advertising. I'm, I'm guessing this means it's more geared towards, uh, um, editorial. So if I do an editorial and usually I know the photographer I work with, then um, the photographer will send me his or her mood board and just to kind of give me a direction of like the vibe of the story, uh, location. Um, and then I'll do my own mood board based on the fashion. Like I pull some slides from, you know, either like historical references or photographs of you know certain things that I want to shoot like certain looks I want to shoot um, and sort of we exchange you know mood boards and then we get the dialogue going and it depends a lot of times I don't really meet if it's somebody I work with a lot like I don't really meet with photographers prior like to sit down like a lot of um, the conversation will get done in uh, email or by Skype you know FaceTime that kind of stuff and um, and then usually, if if there's a lot of hair and makeup um, involved, then we'll try to incorporate the hair and makeup people into the conversation, and just say this is what we're doing. Like, do you have any ideas in terms of the hair and makeup? You know, because sometimes you need extensions or wigs or, you know, every I like usually it's a very collaborative process. So um, we we like to sort of incorporate everybody into the conversation. I think it's good to do that in general got you got you cool all right let's see let's, let's get a little interactivity here mm -hmm. um this should be fun <laughs> so <laughs> we'll invite this person on to ask a question hopefully you can join soon i think this question is what's the most awful experience i think that was the top question what's the most awful experience you've ever had so again if you want to ask that <laughs> <I> can, <laughs> Yeah, your your most awful photo shoot experience. You know, a lot of times we hear about the ones that went well, but what about um, mm. were there any standouts for you that really didn't go well, and and why? Um, well, I'm sure. I mean, there there is a few. <laughs> There's a few for sure. I mean, um, there was one, um, like which was an advertising shoot, which was awful, not because of the the shoot or the photographer, but the producer on the shoot was, you know, he was just a really, like, he was a big asshole and he was a misogynist and the entire week, it was an entire week shoot, he was making, you know, disparaging remarks about, you know, his girlfriend and women in general and he was just a not nice person to be around and on the last day of the shoot, he, I think my assistant was asking him for we needed um, a box like a box to pack up some stuff and he had a complete meltdown and started yelling at me in front of everybody and um i just walked out like this was the first and last time i've ever ever actually walked out of a shoot and didn't return because i was like i was done dealing with him and i called my agent and i said i don't ever ever want to see this person again and um i you know, no one deserves to be treated like this and spoken to like this and then of course like he called he apologized he was giving me this un under so much stress bullshit talk. And um, so that was awful because I've never done this before. And I'm in general, like a really nice level-headed person. And then one experience on a celebrity shoot um, for Spin, it's that long ago, was we had a shoot with um, a singer and she, I pulled, you know, we had a lot of clothes. We had like racks and racks of clothes and she came in with her personal assistant and they had like a teeny tiny box 
of just random like t-shirts and she ended up she didn't even look at the clothes i brought she just literally pulled like a tank top and um you know wore this on a cover shoot and you know i couldn't touch her she wouldn't try anything else on. and she was just awful she made the set designer cry like the set designer had built this huge beautiful set and then she refused to be photographed in it she was just awful and so that was that. wait okay who was this can you say who this was okay i mean i guess i usually don't like kiss and tell but it was so long ago and i don't even know if she's around anymore it was nelly Fortado. really what yeah oh my goodness we all love her oh well I'm, I like a bird, like I'm like a bird. And I remember I came home after the shoot and I had actually her CD on my on my computer and I erased the entire CD because I hated her so much. And the funny oh. thing is that on the same shoot with Nelly Furtado, we, we shot Jay-Z and Jay-Z was the nicest, sweetest, like most caring, like huggy bear. He was just like, I love him. He brought champagne. Like he was the funnest, you know. And who knew the guy who used to sell drugs I is the know. nicest I was so the girl who I was, thinks about birds. I was intimidated like by Jay-Z, but like, you know, Nelly Furtado, where you think she's this cute little, she was so, yeah, she was a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Shoot the shit when real people get real out here. Oh. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Let's get to the question. Um, let's jump to more of a kind of a technical one and then we'll go to something more fun again. So what should be in a styling kit? What is the most important thing that you have in your <laughs> kit when you go to a set? Like, do you have any, you know, is there like a tool belt or you have or uh, something like, you know, what do you usually bring? No, I mean, I have a huge, I have a huge styling kit and then usually I have, like things on me while I'm shooting. But usually, I mean, what you should have, um, which I have a lot of everything because I always over prepare. Um, but, you know, you should have obviously clips. Um, you need clips, safety pins, double stick tape, um, shoehorn, um, shout wipes for any sort of stains. Um, you need a tag gun, like, you know, when you have items from department stores and you have to remove the tags and then tack them on again, um, you need a rope. I always bring a rope and slippers when I'm on location because models always want like ropes and slippers. Um, chicken cutlets. I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with the term chicken cutlets when a model needs help um, mm -hmm. yep. in that department. Then, you know, pedals like breast pedals, like all these little tricks that you need for uh, girls to cover up nipples, nipple covers, um, shoe inserts to make heels more um, cushy. Um, yeah, I think that's sort of like the main, and then also like, you know, I have a whole other kit with underpinning Spanx underwear, um, tights, you know, I always bring tights to shoots, um, you know, Spanx when, you know, you have celebrities, you wanna have some Spanx in case they feel uncomfortable or you know they just need like a little help so yeah so but that's sort of the main the main things i think you need to bring on every shoot cool so pretty much just always be prepared as much as you can ever have, have yeah, too much because stuff. also there's always people there's always other people that come ask you you know scissors i mean scissors too scissors a little sewing kit i mean the list goes on it's a lot cool wow that's crazy <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Oh, so I'm done answering. So the next question is, uh, photographers you enjoy working with the most, what is it that makes these photographers so wonderful to work with? Well, most of the time they're, you know, photographers I work with a lot, like they're friends, first of all, like, you know, because when you work a lot with, you know, it feels very like you're, it's like a little family, you know, um, being creative together feels like a family. But usually I just really like their pictures, you know, and also um, if, if you have a good relationship with a photographer, they let you do your thing and they also like your input. Like my, my favorite photographers ask me, you know, about opinions on pictures or editing or, um, you know, location. I mean, it becomes like a real collaborative effort, you know, and um, that's kind of what they all have in 
common. And usually also they're all nice to work with. Like I don't like working with people that are difficult for the sake of being difficult. You know, I enjoy, I, I'm nice on set. You know, I like people to be kind and um, easy to work with and, you know, friendly. And so if the vibe is, is right, you know, you want to work with these people more because it just it's, makes work more fun when you work with people that, you know, you like their pictures, but they're also um, nice people to be around. Cool. And uh, what are some of the photographers? Uh, any specific names that you really uh, enjoy working with? God, there's so many. I mean, I work a lot with this photography couple, Jenny Gage and Tom Betterton. Um, they're super talented, like husband and wife team. One of my favorite uh, photographers, Melody McDaniel, who's, you know, she did like Madonna videos in the 80s. I mean, she's incredible. Um, who's one of my fave, fave, fave photographers. I love working with Rankin, who's an English photographer. He's... Uh, yep, yep, we know Rankin, days and confused. <laughs> that's, that's right. And so he's, you know, he's very sweet. Um, God, who else? I mean, there's so many. Like Alexi Hay, I like because we go way back. I mean, there's a lot of people I still work with and I, I used to work with in my spin days. So, you know, it's... it's uh, Usually when you work with photographers and you get along with them, um, you tend to work with them for, you know, a long time. So. Cool. Nice. So I want to jump to something that I noticed on your website, which was this special project with the Olsen uh, twins. <laughs> Talk about that. What is that? That looks interesting. Tell us more. You mean, what's that? The book, the influence book. Yeah, 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 this. yeah. Well, this was basically after I worked with um, Mary Kate, um, they approached me. Um, she introduced me to Ashley, and they at the time were approached about doing a book called Influence, which you know was was them basically curating different people that have an influence in fashion, have an influence on them, and obviously it's interlaced with um, their own you know pictures. And Rankin, actually, this was the first time I worked with Rankin. Uh, oh, wow. And this, you know, this was a really mammoth project because it was canceled. Like, we had to postpone the shoot a few times for various reasons. And so I had, you know, a lot of clothes and a lot of, it was a lot of new clothes, current designer clothes, a lot of vintage clothes. Like, this this capelet that Ashley wears with the green dress is actually, I found this in the flea market for $5. That sort of torn off her shoulder um, Victorian capelet. And, you know, and it was super cool. Like, I had all the clothes in my apartment, and um, Mary Kate and Ashley would come over and we'd do a fitting and just hang out. And it was a real collaborative uh, process, and we shot it over the course of two days. And um, it was a really, like, fun project to work on, you know, because I've never really done anything like this before I'd like to work on a book and um and they sent me a copy with this beautiful um this beautiful little notes um that was just great like they just were very appreciative and lovely girls to work with cool so let's jump to your new collaboration which is you are now a designer let's talk about how that kind of transpired and you're seeing a lot of that now with you know um People going to let's break it down. People going to uh, you know stylists going into design. It definitely makes sense. You guys know clothes. You guys are a lot of the trendsetters. You know if you're styling all these people for spin and nylon on the yeah. covers, people see that they're like you know and that sets trends. So yeah. you know yeah, talk about that. Well, the line that I'm working on is called Koza K O Z A, and um, I'm doing the line with a friend of mine who's also German, and um, she's one of my best friends. And it sort of started really organically, you know, like not even two years ago, we just um, were, she had a line before just bags and the line wasn't really taking off. And I'm not really a bag person, but um, I, you know, I said, well, maybe we should just expand and you should just do some ready to wear. And she wasn't as um, confident in doing ready to wear. So I said, well, why don't I, why don't we just do it together, you know, and just like, make a few pieces and that's what we did and then we um made a few pieces it's not 
we didn't want it to be like a fashion fashion uh, thing because I think we're both aware, especially me, um, that it's very, very hard to break into um, the industry with like a full fledged designer label. So it's more based around sort of casual um, leisure wear. You know, that's our moniker is sort of like leisure wear for cool girls. So it's Baja sweaters and caftans. And what's the website really quickly? If you want to type it in, um, bring that up. Rosa.uk.com. Yeah, that sounds complicated. Can you type that in? <laughs> in the, in the top. I mean, it's on here. Yeah. Hold on. Okay. I heard some German in there. I'm like, wait a minute. Dot UK dot com. Ah, oh, wait. No, I actually misspelled it. Hold on. I'm a horrible person. Cosa. Or yeah, you can go to, this is actually better to go because our Instagram has actually more stuff on it. Cosa official. Follow on, follow on, on Instagram. At Cosa official. Done. Well, sorry. Let's go. Yeah, let's pull this up. Um, yeah. yeah. So basically, we did an appointment um, with uh, with a showroom, and they represented us for sales for a season. And then um, Netta Porte picked us up, which was, you know, amazing, but also very terrifying because we had to find. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, this Netta Porte before we get into the looks, um, but. This is currently on the net a porte homepage, yes. and those shorts, those shorts are yours. Yes, very exciting. I mean, we got really excited about that one, I have to say. It just looks so good. It looks so good. It's gratifying for me on a whole other level to actually design clothes that you then see on a model and people are buying them. You know, it's a whole new exciting experience that I really relish. So it's, yeah, it's great. I mean, net a porte um thankfully they were our earliest supporter which basically helped us get the business really going because obviously they gave us a, a really large order but then you know it's hard it's just me and her doing it and we're doing the press and we're doing sales and you know we have to do pretty much we don't have interns so it's it's besides my main job it's a it's a whole um like side job now becoming like a big 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 uh, side job. Yeah, Hold on. Here we go. Cool. So the uh, oh, I don't know how to spell. Apparently, <laughs> let's try that again. Here we go. Why? <laughs> apparently, we'll go back here until that loads. So, and do you approve of this styling here that, oh, that yeah, we're I seeing? I mean, that's that was was so exciting about it that I, you know, because sometimes people shoot our stuff and we don't really like it. Um, but this was so, I mean, so spot on because this is exactly how we see the line, like sexy, but casual, beachy, but you know, like it's basically clothes that you want to travel with, you want to live with, and they take you day from day to night. And, you know, you have them in the closet for a long time. It's not meant to be clothes like that are super trendy, you know? Got you. Yeah. And so what kind of, what are some of the next steps you're doing with the line while Instagram loads? Some reason, um, second, so well, we're, we're just, we're working on um, a resort right now and um, we're just expanding, you know, we're just, the line is getting bigger and hopefully we want to, you know, be in more stores. We have really good stores right now. Like we're in a lot of amazing, I mean, besides that we're in a lot of amazing specialty stores. Um, like Kiranasa Bet and the Dresden, Lee's Walker in LA. So we're trying to, you know, just expand, like get more stores, um, get in more retailers and get the line more out there so people, you know, hear more about it. Like press certainly helps. Like being on net porte um, helps for sure for visibility. Cool. So all right, now I got the website up. Instagram was acting funny. Oh. I'm not sure why. Okay, yes. but website. there's not that much on it because we haven't really, <laughs> we don't have the time to really dedicate to it that much. That's why I said like it's, you can see all our retailers if you guys want to um, check out retailers, like they're all on here. Oh, wow. You were in a lot of places. This is an endeavor. I'm yeah. very impressed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Let's get into one or two more questions. And then I think, um, unless anybody else has some specific questions. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can get into a, a few more here. Let's see. Okay. Uh, what is the industry standard? Well, 
let me click it first. What is the industry standard when it comes to presenting your portfolio? Is it necessary to have an actual book or is it okay to have an online portfolio? Um, I mean, for me personally, I think it's maybe different for photographers. I think photographers, when they go on appointments, people still like to see an actual portfolio because, you know, the photography, you want to present it like you want to see the big prints. Photographers are quite uh, proud to present their work and like, you know, so you see the quality of the photographs and all that. Um, when I go on appointments, I have to say I haven't used my portfolio. I still have one here, but I haven't actually been on an appointment with my portfolio in years. Um, I only use my iPad because it just is so much easier because, you know, when, first of all, you can have more, you can show more work because, you know, my portfolio used to be 100 pages long and it always felt like very, like, because people have to, like, physically look through it. And when you show them the website and you have all the different categories, then whoever is looking at your work can just look under what they're interested in. Do they want to see the covers? Do they want to see advertising? Do they want to see men's fashion, women's, you know, it's just, I think for me, it's much more, um, I love like um, just presenting my work on the iPad or on a computer. I think it's much easier and um, less of a hassle. So I think you're totally, you're totally fine doing it on an iPad. If you have a good website and your website looks nicely presented and designed, I think you can totally forego having a portfolio. But I mean, don't quote me as the industry standard. That's just my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, sure. And then um, you mentioned covers. In terms of shooting covers, what is it, you know, what's the difference between doing like a specific cover shoot versus doing an editorial or is just the cover a part of the editorial? No, I mean, cover and editorial, well, the cover is part of the editorial, but the cover shoot is completely different than when you do like a, a fashion editorial. Because when you do a cover, well, it depends also if you do a cover with models or a cover with celebrity. Like if I do a cover with a celebrity, um, you know, you can, you have less freedom in a way because you have to sort of, work around a celebrity and what they're comfortable wearing and you can't quite you know when you do an editorial with a model or even a cover with a model i mean the model they don't give you input they don't say don't put this hat on me don't put glasses on me don't i don't like these shoes like you know it's easier because a model just knows my job is to model and to put on whatever the stylist gives me and you don't get a lot of pushback with celebrity it's a little bit different because you have to work with their publicists and you know, and sometimes they don't feel comfortable wearing certain things. So it's it's a different dance. You know, it's a it's a different um, it's a different process a little bit. But um, I mean, I like both because you know it's a different challenge. Like each is is different. But you know, when you do fashion editorial, you have no restrictions, which is fantastic because then you can just basically go for your vision. And, um, you know, and you can do whatever you kind of like. And with, you know, on a cover shoot with a celebrity, um, it's not quite, it's not quite as, um, you don't have as much freedom, really. Got you, let's see, is there any more? Aha, there we go, that's one thing we missed. So this is probably a good final question, which is, what was your absolute best or some of the most amazing photo shoots you've, you've ever had? Who was the client and what did you like about it? Oh, God. I mean, there's so it's probably hard. It's, it's hard because there's so many, like so many, um, oh, it's hard. I mean, obviously, I mean, the Olsen shoot. Okay, here's, here's, here's an easy question. What was the most recent favorite photo shoot that you've done? Hmm. I have to say probably, well, in terms of the shoot, it was actually really hard. It was, um, but it was an insanely amazing trip. I was on a, on a shoot in December for 10 days in South Africa. And it was my first time in, in Africa on the continent and the first time in South Africa. And it just was the most amazing in terms of, you know, it's just so beautiful to be there and to be there for that long and, you know, fly first class and stay in the five star hotel. But it was a really grueling, um, it was a, a commercial um, production. But um, so in terms of the shoot, it was hard, 
but it was just you know insanely amazing to be there it was an incredible trip i felt like i was on vacation you know which is and, and you know, who was the and who was the client and who was the client for this it was for garnier for it's a it was for oh, hair. hair care oh, no. yeah hair care. Yeah, okay, yeah yeah so, so wait a minute so yeah talk about that you're styling hair care how, how does that kind of work um it works kind of like you do with fashion i mean it's kind of funny when i just saw the commercial actually finally because it's starting they're launching a new oh, this was a film this was film motion oh yeah it was motion it was motion it was three commercials in one week so it was very um it was very um labor intensive in terms of the whole production but it's kind of the same it's funny when you think of a commercial because when you end up seeing the commercial you see i just saw it for the first time like yesterday and you see very little clothes, you just see glimpses of clothes. And there is a fitting, like you have a 16 hour day fitting, like people really, really, the clients really care about the clothes. And you can never <laughs> say, well, you really, the clothes really don't matter because it's really about the hair. The clients really care about the clothes. Even if you end up only seeing like a millisecond of a shirt, um, you know, styling in commercials is really, really important. Um, and there's, yeah, there's a lot of um, thought and work and money that goes into it. You know, when you have um, on these kind of jobs, you have a huge budget, which is, you know, on one hand great, but also it, it comes with a lot of responsibility because you have a lot of, um, you have a lot of eyes on you when you do these kind of jobs. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen, there's agency clients, director and the team was multinational so it was a big production but you know it's a it's a challenge in a different way because you have to be really good with people you have to be efficient you have to be a problem solver um you have to learn how to change direction quick and you know and luckily i'm surrounded by an amazing team i have an amazing assistant i had a great um, amazing local assistant in South Africa. So it ended up actually, it was one of my favorite shoots, even though it was very challenging shoot when we were going through it. Yeah, that's a great um, way to end. Obviously film is, you know, motion is, is becoming so important now to, yeah. to fashion brands and magazines and things like that. So that's actually kind of a great way to kind of end off here so obviously you've been on for way too long you can talk forever that's those are the best guests other people can just i just ask a question and they just talk for 10 minutes and then you're like wow okay then. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome thank you so much daniela for thank you thank you so much so, what we can do is if you could email us your mat your like a picture of your your uh styling kit and we'll just like send it out to people i think that could be cool i think that's it because okay. you kind of listed a lot of stuff and i'm pretty sure we forgot it all um, <laughs> there's, a lot. there's a lot yeah cool thank you so so much feel free to follow her we'll put your uh so we got the, we got the instagram we got the website look for her stuff tweet it push it do cool. all that amazing i don't amazing do work. twitter i'm like the only person that doesn't do twitter but yeah i'm on instagram that's my only social media outlet thank cool. you so much yeah thank you hopefully we'll bring you back on in a couple couple months and get some more updates Okay, cool. Bye, Jamal. Bye. Right, bye, Danielle.